Uh, this morning, monitoring the start of metric exams in the province, a record total of 201,107 full-time and part-time candidates will be sitting for the National Senior Certificate Examinations in that province. According uh, to the Provincial Department of Education, this is the largest group they have had to administer in the last six years. The MEC is in Phoenix and uh, uh, he's with uh, Bongani Gema uh, following the story. Bongani, uh, what's the MEC saying this morning? Well, Desri, a very good morning to you and a good morning to our SAPC viewers. Desri, we are actually at Squam Marshall in, uh, in Tala Nipo High School. It is a township school where about uh, 170 learners have sat down today to write their first English paper. As you mentioned in your intro, more than 200,000 learners in the province are sitting for this year's exam, the biggest number in the country. Now, you'll remember, Desri, that these are the same learners who during the grade 11 year, the COVID-19 pandemic struck, so they were disrupted by the lockdown. And also, these are the learners who had to sit down during their matric year, uh, during the unrest that we saw earlier this year, so they faced another disturbances. So this is their exam. After going through all this, they are sitting for this exam. The, the MEC for Education in the province saying that they are confident that these learners will indeed do well. But I have with me the MEC for Education in the province, Baba Kwas Mishengu. Thank you very much for your time. Just firstly, tell us why are you so confident that these learners are, are going to do well and that you are ready for these exams? It's because of our preparations that uh, uh, we have been undertaking uh, throughout uh, the year. Uh, we actually started to prepare for these exams as early as last year. Uh, immediately after we finished the 2020 examination, we started the preparations for this. Uh, not only the exam period, which is starting today, but uh, we have been hard in preparing the learners themselves to be ready and fit for, for, for these examinations. We put up a, a, what we call the 12-point plan as a province, which we were very aggressive in implementing it and monitoring it. A plan that was aimed basically at uh, improving the learning performance uh, of these learners, focusing on those that uh, the area, the, the learners which we had identified as weak in terms of specific subjects, making sure that they get uh, proper examination skills, uh, even running extra classes to make sure that we cover uh, the time lost. You remember that we opened late this year. We closed earlier during the winter vacations and opened later because of, of uh, the COVID-19. But we also disrupted by the civil unrest, which led into us uh, cancelling all the winter classes. So we had to cover all that time lost. Um, that is why we want to sincerely thank our educators who had to work even on weekends and extra hours to make sure that we cover the time lost. We are sure that uh, we've covered the entire curriculum for these learners. We are now focusing on helping them to revise even in the days where they will be not writing. They will be compelled to come to school so that they get assisted in revision uh, by these dedicated educators. Now, MEC, I know that you've mentioned that this is the biggest number of learners you've had uh, over the years. Uh, how do you ensure that you prepare uh, an adequate number of invigilators to sit to make sure that these learners are able to rise? Uh, we, we are running an examination with uh, 201,000 learners, the biggest uh, uh, over the past six years, but also the biggest in the country, as you know, that uh, the province is the biggest uh, compared to other provinces. Uh, so we had to recruit about uh, just over 6,000 invigilators uh, and train them so that they make sure that there's nothing that goes wrong insofar as this examination, because credibility and integrity of examinations are everything. You can prepare well, but once you lose it in those areas, then the whole examination will be tainted. So all these uh, um, invigilators have been uh, dispatched throughout the 1,700 um, uh, examination rooms uh, or rather examination centers uh, across the province. But we'll also be monitoring make sure that we visit schools until the last uh, day of examinations. We are also assisted by my colleagues in the executive uh, led by the premier himself, but also colleagues in the legislature led by the speaker herself are also all over the province to help us to monitor these exams and make sure that there's nothing really that goes wrong. It's quite a heavy uh, examinations, I must say, 201,000 uh, learners sitting for examinations, quite, a, quite a, a huge number to manage. But uh, we had to make sure that we put up systems uh, that will help us to make sure that we run successful, uh, credible examinations. And as we speak, all our centers are open. All the learners that have registered have presented themselves. All centers have actually started write, writing because we're starting at nine. So we're quite confident that every day of writing, we won't uh, experience challenges that may affect the examination.
negotiations. And uh, MSC, uh, last week when you spoke during the pledge signing ceremony that we had in La Monville, you mentioned that you're going to issue a notice, a circular, uh, banning all activities unrelated to teaching and learning. Is that the case as we speak now? Indeed, it's the case. We're not allowing any activity in schools now except teaching and learning because we don't want any distraction. Uh, every other thing must happen after school or people must have to wait until we finish exams. These learners and educators now must be allowed space and time to focus on these examinations. And we have issued that circular. We also want to reiterate that call that there shall be no principal who will allow anyone to enter our schools during uh, learning, uh, teaching and learning uh, hours, uh, during examinations, unless that person is authorized by the department uh, to enter the premises and do whatever that is related to the examinations. But any other thing that is not related to the examination is not allowed in our schools until we finish the exams. Now, lastly, MSC, there's been a concern regarding load shedding. Does the province have a backup plan in cases where these learners have to face load shedding during the exams? There are areas where uh, centers where they will be writing, for example, computer application studies and things that, are, that needs uh, the, the presence of electricity. Uh, in those areas, we have put up generators uh, to, to, as a backup plan in case of load shedding. But we have also made a point with the National Department to say they need to engage ESCOM, that they also need to align their load shedding hours uh, with, our, with our exam time. Because our exam time, the maximum that we take is three hours uh, per paper. Others will be two hours, but we don't go beyond three hours. So we think that uh, ESCOM can plan such that they don't uh, apply load shedding during the examination hours. They can do anything after that, but they need to protect the space of exam so that they are not uh, interrupted. Thank you very much for something. Well, that's there you have it. That's the MEC for Education in the province, Uazim Sheng, who's saying this. Well, it's all systems go today. The first paper the learner sets down, they are writing confidence that they are going to get uh, good results this day, even though, as I mentioned earlier, these are the learners who have faced a number of disturbances in their uh, last years of their school career. So, really, the, all eyes are going to be on them to see how they are going to perform. But for now, Desiree, let's take it back to you. Of course, we continue to monitor the situation throughout the country.